All right, this video is to show you how to complete Pundit squares and figure out genotypic and phenotypic ratios from those Pundit squares, and also figure out the percent chance that an offspring from certain parents will be born uh, with specific traits. So let's get to it. Um, in this example, we're going to look at the possible genetic combinations from a mom that has a heterozygous pair of alleles, one capital letter and one lowercase letter, with a heterozygous male. Uh, who also has one capital letter and one lowercase letter. For this case, uh, for this example, we're going to use uh, the uh, hair color as our trait. So brown hair is a dominant trait and will be re represented with capital letters, and blonde hair is a recessive trait that will be represented with lowercase letters. So mom's genotype is heterozygous, one allele that codes for brown hair, dominant, and one allele that codes for blonde hair, which is recessive. Therefore, mom's phenotype, the physical feature that you would see, would be brown hair because the dominant gene is brown, capital B, and would cover up the recessive allele of blonde hair. Therefore, we would see brown hair in the mom. The same is true for the dad, right? The dad has a capital letter that codes for brown hair and a lowercase letter that codes for blonde hair. So the dominant gene, always represented with capital letters, covers up the recessive gene so dad would also have brown hair. So when trying to figure out a pun and square for, for different individuals, what we do is we take the genotypes of the individual and we place them on the top and side of the pun and square. So let's look at the mom's genotype first. I'm going to use a red pencil for this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two possible alleles that the mom can give, either the capital B or the lowercase b, because these really live on different chromosomes. Right? This capital B is on one chromosome, this lowercase b is on a different chromosome, and when, a mom, when the mom is making a gamete, um, or an egg cell is being produced in the mom, uh, the egg is only going to have one of those chromosomes, so it can only have either the capital B or the lowercase b. So what I do is I take this capital B and lowercase b, and I put them on the sides of the Punnett square, but I need to separate them. So I'm going to put the capital B here on this row in the Punnett square, and I'm going to take that lowercase b and put it down here on this lower row on the Pundit square. All right. Now, I'm going to use a different color for the dad's genes. I'm going to use, I think I have a purple pencil here. So I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to separate these alleles on the top of the Pundit square. So I'm going to put the capital B from here. I'm going to put it over this column in the Pundit square. And then I'm going to take this lowercase b and put it over this column in the Pundit square. And now I just need to fill in the Pundit square. And it doesn't matter if you start from the side or from the top. I have the purple pencil in my hand, so I'm going to start with the, the top. And what I do is I just take this B and I put it down into the two squares below it. So I put a capital B here and a capital B here. That comes from this B here, and I'm just filling in the squares below with the same letter. I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I have a lowercase B this time. So I'm just going to put a lowercase B and a lowercase B below, and I'm just getting this letter from the, from the top above the Pundit square and filling in the squares below it. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the mom, except now we're moving to the right. So I take this capital B and I put it into the two squares to the right. So I've got a capital B, and I'm going to put the capital B here in front of the lowercase b, just because capital letters look better before a lowercase letter than after. And that's just from conventions, right? We start sentences with a capital letter. And we like capital letters. Our eyes really like to see capital letters before lowercase letters. Then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this lowercase b and put it into the two boxes to the right. And so now I have got my four possible gene combinations from the, the, from the parent's original genes. And what I always like to do is write in the, the phenotype that results from the genotype. Remember, genotype, this is a genotype. It's a pair of alleles code for a physical trait. So in this case, remember, brown hair is dominant, and, and we use a capital letter. Blonde hair is recessive, and we use a lowercase letter. So if we have two capital Bs, this offspring would have brown hair. This offspring would also have brown hair because the brown hair gene is dominant and would cover up the blonde hair gene. So I would have brown hair uh, for this uh, genotype. This offspring would have brown hair because of its genotype. And then if I go to this, um, box. I've got a capital B, lowercase b. The capital B for brown hair covers up the recessive gene for blonde hair. 
This person would also have brown hair. And lastly, we have two recessive genes, a uh, set of homozygous recessive genes. They're both code for blonde hair. And because there's no capital B here, the only thing that this person could have is the code that's here, which is blonde hair. This person would have blonde hair. Okay, so we have four possible combinations, three of which would give brown hair, right? One, two, three, and one would give blonde hair. So now that we have the Punnett square filled out, we can fill, up, fill out the genotypic and phenotypic ratio. So the genotypic ratio, right, is the number of homozygous dominant to number of heterozygous to number of homozygous recessive. So capital B, capital B, to capital B, lowercase b, to lowercase b, lowercase b. And we just have to look in the Punnett square, figure out how many of each are in the Punnett square. I only see one capital B, capital B, it's right here. So I'd put a one for that. For the heterozygous, capital B, lowercase b, I see two of them, one, two. Okay, so I'd put that two down here. And the last one is lowercase b, lowercase b, or homozygous recessive. I only see one of those, it's right here. So I put a one for that. And here's my genotypic ratio, one to two to one. Now, to figure out the phenotypic ratio, I need to count the number of genotypes that would give brown hair. That's why writing in these phenotypes here makes it really easy for this phenotypic ratio. So I see one, two, three combinations that would give brown hair. And I only see one allele combination right here that would give blonde hair. So the phenotypic ratio would be three to one. And we always list the phenotypic ratio as dominant to recessive. So brown is the dominant trait. We have three of those to one, um, one set of alleles that would code for blonde hair. Next, we can find out the percentage chance that the offspring from these parents would have brown hair. Again, we come up to the Punnett square, and there's four, there's four squares, and the combinations in three of these squares, right, one, two, three, would give brown hair. So that's three out of four, right? Three out of the possible four combinations, and this would equal 75%. So these parents would have a 75% chance of creating an offspring that had brown hair. And if I'm looking for the percentage chance that, these, that this offspring from these parents would have blonde hair, I just count the number out of four of gene combinations that would give that blonde hair and it's only this one, this one homozygous recessive little b, little b. That's one out of the four. So one out of four equals 25%. So we got all that information uh, from this Punnett square. The genotypic ratio, the phenotypic ratio, the percent chance that these parents would have an offspring with brown hair, 75%, and the percentage chance that these offspring um, would have blonde hair from these parents, which was 25%. This also shows how even though the parents show the dominant trait of brown hair, they can still have a child with blonde hair, even though it's only a 25% chance. You see here. Okay, I hope this helps. Um, let me know or your teacher know if you have any questions. Another example of using a Punnett square. This time the mother has homozygous dominant pair, two dominant genes, and dad has a heterozygous pair, a dominant gene and a recessive gene. And again in this example we're just going to use uh, hair color, so capital B codes for brown hair which is dominant, the lowercase letter B uh, codes for blonde hair which is recessive. So mom's phenotype, she has two genes for brown hair, so mom would have brown hair. Dad's phenotype, it's based on his genotype. Remember, genotype codes for phenotype. Uh, dad has a, um, a brown hair allele, capital B, and a, and a recessive allele for blonde hair, lowercase b. But dad's phenotype would still be brown hair, right? Because the brown hair gene, the capital B, covers up the blonde hair gene or allele, lowercase b. So dad would have brown hair. So what we do to fill out the Punnett square, I like to use separate colors for this, um, so I'm going to use mom's uh, genotype. I'm going to I'm going to use red for this, and this time I'm going to put mom's genes on top. So I'm going to take these two genes and separate them on the top. So capital B, capital B. I just take one B and put it over this column, 
take another B, put it over this column. I'm going to use purple for dad. Hey, dad has capital B, lowercase b. So I'm going to put his genes on the side, capital B, lowercase b. I separate them, the capital B on the top row, the lowercase b on the lower row. And now I just need to fill in uh, the pun and square. So I'm going to start with the red, and I'm going to take the capital B, and I'm going to put it in the boxes below. So capital B, capital B, and I get that by just putting the B in all the boxes that's below it. I'm going to take this capital B and put it in the boxes below it. So capital B, capital B. And now I need to fill in the Punnett square for dad's genes or dad's alleles. So I take this capital B and I put it in the boxes to the right. So I'm going to put a capital B here and I'm going to put a capital B here. And now I move to the lowercase b. I have this lowercase b and I'm going to put it in the boxes to the right. So lowercase b, lowercase b. Right? And now what I always like to do is write the phenotype that would result from these possible genotypes. Well, this child would have brown hair because it has two genes or two alleles for brown hair. This child would also have brown hair because it has two genes for brown hair, two capital letters. This child would have brown hair because it has um, a capital B, which codes for blonde hair, which is dominant and a lowercase gene that codes for blonde hair, but the brown hair gene covers up the blonde hair gene. And even though they have a gene for blonde hair, it doesn't show because the dominant allele covers up the recessive allele. And the same is true for this gene pair. This person would have brown hair. This offspring would have brown hair. Okay, so now I can fill out my genotypic and phenotypic ratios, right, based on the Punnett square. The genotypic ratio is the number of homozygous dominant, two capital letters, to heterozygous, uh, capital in the lowercase, to lowercase, lowercase, or homozygous recessive. So how many of the four would be capital B, capital B? I've got one, two. So put a two there. How many would be homo or heterozygous? Capital B, lowercase b, I have one, two. And how many would be lowercase b, lowercase b? Well, none of them. Okay, in my class, I want you to write a zero here. Now, in some classes, what you can do is get rid of this zero and just write two to two, but I always want you to do this in my class is homozygous dominant, capital, capital, to, to heterozygous, capital, lowercase, to lowercase, lowercase. So we're going to leave this as two to two to zero. Now, the phenotypic ratio. The number of offspring possible combinations that would code for brown hair versus the number of combinations that would code for blonde hair. Well, all four of these combinations code for brown hair, and zero of these combinations code for blonde hair, so I still want you to write this as four to zero. Four with the dominant physical trait, and zero with the recessive physical trait. All right now, what's the percentage chance that offspring from these parents will have brown hair? Well, again, we count the number out of four. So one, two, three, four out of the possible four combinations would have brown hair. So we'd write four out of four or 100% chance. These parents will only produce children with brown hair. Now, some of their offspring might have the gene for blonde hair, but it'll be covered up and you won't be able to see it. And then if I scoot this sheet up a little bit here and make sure I can see bottom here. Sorry, that wasn't adjusted very well. I apologize for that. So we've got the percentage chance that the offspring of these parents will have blonde hair. Well, how many of these possible combinations would give us blonde hair? None. Or zero out of four, or zero percent chance that these parents would produce a child with blonde hair. All right, and I hope this helps. Um, let me or your teacher know if you have any questions. And thanks for your time. All right, here's one more example. Um, we're going to look at the cross between a mom that is heterozygous, capital B, lowercase b, and a dad that is homozygous recessive. So this two lowercase b's or two recessive alleles. So mom's phenotype, she has a capital B and a lowercase b. Again, we're going to use hair color. Capital B is dominant for brown hair. Lowercase b is recessive for blonde hair. So mom has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And so mom is going to have brown hair. Now dad has two lowercase alleles or two recessive alleles, both of which code for blonde hair. So dad's phenotype 
would be blonde hair. So again, I need to separate uh, these, these alleles from each parent. So I'll start with mom. I'll use red for mom. I'm going to go on the side this time. And so I'm going to take a capital B and put it here on this row. I'm going to take that lowercase b and put it down here on this row. And then I need to do the same for dad. So dad has two lowercase b's. I'll use purple for dad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of his alleles and put it over this column in the Punnett square. And I'm going to take that other lowercase b and put it over this column in the Punnett square. Right? Then I just need to fill in the columns. So I'm going to go back to my red pencil and I'm going to take this b and I'm going to put it in each uh, box in the row to the right of the letter. So capital B in this box, right? And then a capital B in this box. And I'm gonna do the same with the lowercase b. Take this lowercase red b and I'm gonna put it in the box to the right. And then take this lowercase b and put it in the other box to the right. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my purple pencil in the, the alleles from the dad and I'm gonna fill in, take the B here and put it in every box below it. So I'm gonna put a lowercase B here and a lowercase B here. Same thing here, I'm gonna take this lowercase B and put it in the boxes below. So lowercase B, lowercase B. So now I have the genotypes of the possible offspring. What I like to do is write the phenotypes in the boxes right away so I know what they are and what they represent. So if I have a capital B and a lowercase B, a dominant and a recessive allele, the dominant covers up the recessive so this child would have brown hair. Same thing's true here. This child would have brown hair. This child, this offspring though, has two lowercase b's. Therefore, they're gonna, this is gonna code for blonde hair. So this offspring would have blonde hair. This offspring, for the same reason, same reasons, would also have blonde hair. Okay, so now I've my Punnett square filled in. So now what I can do is I can answer these questions. I can fill in the genotypic ratio, the phenotypic ratio, and answer the percent chance that the child would be born with brown hair or blonde hair based on the genotypes of the parents. So first thing, genotypic ratio. I need to look at the number of uh, homozygous dominant to heterozygous to homozygous recessive. I don't see any homozygous dominant, zero, right? No capital B, capital B is the genotype, so I write zero. Out of the four possible combinations, two of them would be heterozygous, capital B, lowercase b, and two of them would be lowercase b, lowercase b. So my genotypic ratio would be 0 to 2 to 2. My phenotypic ratio is dominant to recessive, brown hair to blonde hair. Well, one, two of the possible four combinations would give brown hair and two of the possible four combinations would give blonde hair. So the phenotypic ratio is two brown hair to two blonde hair, or two to two. Next, we need to figure out the percentage chance that the offspring from these parents will have brown hair. Well, out of these four possible combinations, right, two of them would give brown hair. So we'd say two out of four, or 50% chance that these parents with these genotypes would produce a child with brown hair. And then we do something similar for to figure out the percent chance that these parents would have a, chi a child with blonde hair, right? Two out of the four possible combinations would code for blonde hair. So we'd say two out of four or 50% chance that a child from these offspring would have uh, blonde hair. So I hope this helps. Another example of filling in a pun and square this time for a parent with a heterozygous pair of alleles and the other parent with a homozygous recessive pair of alleles. Um, as always, ask me or your teacher if you have any questions. Again, I hope this helps.